So when air-to-air -air missiles were first announced by Gaijin, we all knew that they were going to be shitty early variants that couldn't pull a lot of Gs. They were rear aspect only. They only had a range of three or four kilometers. This wasn't a surprise to us. But what was a surprise was when they added the pilot spotting missiles kind of mechanic where you get a warning message every time somebody fires a missile at you. And that was disappointing. And I think just about everybody unanimously agreed that that was going to make them entirely useless as weapons and that you were only going to get kills on unaware players and you'd have to use them as kind of support weapons, something to make your opponent that's extending from you break energy, stuff like that. And I was under these same impressions until one day I got shot down by an air-to-air -air missile without ever receiving the warning. And I realized that I hadn't received it because the player who shot me down wasn't spotted. I didn't know he was there and none of my teammates were around. I've seen people call this a bug. Uh, I've seen people in chat saying it's shitty when it's buggy and it doesn't warn you. But no, it's a game mechanic. And once you learn to utilize this, you're going to have a good time. Stealth and remaining undetected has always been a part of my playstyle in Tier 5. And I've noticed that it's kind of a weak spot of the community. Not everyone knows how the spotting mechanics work. Not everyone utilizes them to their full potential. And it's a bit of a shame because it can be very powerful. And... Because of this, I don't think anyone's come to the same conclusion that I have, at least that I've seen in game or on YouTube. Nobody's publicly announced this yet or realized how strong these missiles can be when you use the appropriate playstyle. Personally, about 30 to 50% of my kills with the F100 are air to air missile kills, and I was getting a little annoyed seeing people in chat talking about how useless they were, so I decided to make this video. When you get the chance, open up this screen in-game, hover over the um, Keen Vision tab in these crew's skills, and start memorizing some of these stats, because they will come into play. In this example, I'm flying back towards these clouds that I just came from. I've done a big loop and I've gotten behind these two players, and neither of them know where I'm at. Neither of these players have me spotted. So I lock onto the rear one that's closer to me. Just a note, I listen to music while I'm playing, and that's the reason I've cut all the volume. I don't want to deal with copyright. In this one, I actually managed to fire from the clouds, which is always ideal. I was tracking this player for quite a while. I'm pulling up underneath him, where it's very difficult for him to have me spotted. You can see just how close you're able to get as long as you're in the right direction without them detecting you. As you can see here, he didn't appreciate it much. This is a couple of examples of getting nice and close to the enemy, but staying behind where they can't spot you. As you can see, after the kill, when I look around, nobody had me spotted. That guy never knew I was even there. This one's actually kind of a funny example, since uh, me and the enemy were both a little bit blind. I'm looking down there, trying to figure out how exactly I want to approach these guys without being spotted when there appears Big 19. He didn't see me, I didn't see him, I was just lucky that he came up in front of me instead of behind. Staying stealthy isn't the only way to get the air-to-air -air missile kills. There's still that launch detection delay. It could be anywhere from 0.5 seconds to 2 seconds. So if you're within guns range, chances are you're going to be able to get a missile off that's going to track and kill the target before they get the message, or they're going to get the message too late to react to it and maneuver in time to shake your missile. Uh, here's a few clips of that. This guy is well aware that I'm behind him, and as you can see, the first missile that I shoot gets dodged. I left that in there to prove that he is aware that I'm here. However, he does not have time to react to the second missile. I was lining up beautifully behind a number of people here, but the uh, friendly they were chasing died and they all scattered, which made the air-to-air -air missile launch unlikely, until I looked at this guy and realized that my closure rate was incredibly fast. As you can see, he tried to dodge it at the end there, but he didn't have the chance. 
This guy I probably should have finished with guns. I launched one missile. I thought I was close enough, but he still had time to avoid it. I go for a gun pass and miss, and I decide just for the footage, honestly, that I was going to use a missile for the rest of it. That one was way too close for him to react. Some of you may point out that it's impractical to use a missile when you're already in cannon's range since you can just get guns on target. Uh, the only argument I'll really make to that is when you're going at mock speeds, like in this clip, it can be difficult to get the authority over your control surfaces to actually get guns on target. Uh, the second argument I'll make is that you can launch a tad bit further than you normally would at around 1.2, 1.3 kilometer rather than 0.8 to 1 kilometer when you might start getting guns on target. And that can really throw the enemy off and you can kill them before they begin defensive maneuvering. It's also a lot easier to aim your missile than cannons at this uh, speed because of the annoying mock cloud. So yeah, that's basically it. I wanted to keep this method to myself for a few days and just kind of reap the benefits. And now I'm trying to share it with the community. So start learning how to utilize stealth, start incorporating clouds into your gameplay, and start memorizing the ranges in which you can be detected. And you'll start doing really well with these missiles.